When it comes to adventure mystery thrillers, there seems to be a dearth in this space in Indian cinema, or worlds created which are fantastical and larger than life in every way, but the emotional arc of the characters are universal. This is what Anoop Bhandari attempts with the film Vikrant Rona that has been pitched as a pan-Indian film with Kicha Sadeep in the lead role. Taking a leaf out of the book of his previous venture Rangita Ranga, many of the elements uncovering the screenplay are similar to this venture as well. The official synopsis of the film states that almost half a century ago, a remote village in the middle of a tropical rainforest starts witnessing a series of unexplainable events, which they attribute to the supernatural. And this is the best way I should leave it for you to dissect, as there is a lot to unpack in this film, and most of it, left to be experienced in theatres, is actually the best. How Inspector Vikrant Rona cracks the case of several murders taking place in the superstitious village forms the basic premise of Vikrant Rona. There is little hype in the North Indian Hindi speaking belt for this film, but I'm sure word of mouth will only play its part, despite the genre attracting a limited audience. Here's me telling you the good and bad aspects of the film so that you guys can ultimately decide whether to watch it in theatres or not. The Underwhelming Aspects Force Comedy Like Anub Bandari's previous venture, there is a lot of time taken by the creators to get things going with respect to the plot at hand. Several characters are introduced and their dynamics in the village are showcased. This often accounts for inconsequential comedic gags that don't really land. People are defending the comedy in the film by saying that it only translates in Kannada and how the subtitles and dubbed versions don't do justice to the same, but I think that's a weak argument for a film that is advertised to be consumed all over India. The driver of the family has 11 kids and in a sequence where he is taking his pregnant wife to the hospital, he annoyingly asks her why she produced another child, to which she replies, I had said no. The husband frustratingly says, you said no, but I couldn't help myself. A classic case of an absence of consent masters comedy. A PT master who does not know how to put brakes on his cycle and a kid hitting a ball from the middle of his bat to hit his father's crown jewels all account for the Three Stooges type of humour that really isn't smart or witty. Unnecessary songs and demands patient viewing The biggest problem with the film is that it really does demand for the audience to be patient with its world building. The film takes extremely long to get to the point as it tries to give attention to several of its characters. A feature that definitely weighs down on the running time and the overall impact of the film are the unnecessary songs placed in the screenplay. Whether it be Ra Ra Rakkama or the Lullaby song, they really do slow down the pace of the film, especially when the case itself really gains momentum. For individuals who are fans of Anu Bhandari's world building and know that the payoff is in the conclusion would know that he's just setting up the building blocks in the first half. But I wonder about the masses, about those people who are not privy to his work. They will really find it tough to get totally invested in this film. The first half is a tedious watch, the screenplay being slow, having no connective tissue between scenes, set pieces stand alone are brilliant, but lack an organic structure to only come in full fury in the second half. So as I previously said, the payoff of all the world building really accounts for an engaging second half. The question is whether you're up for it or not. The good. Sound design and cinematography. The film is technically exceptional and has been designed for a big theatre experience. The impact of a film like this on an OTT platform is really going to not have the same impact like it does on the big screen. The cinematography by William David really does transport you to the intended fictional world, like the Phantom comics did for us as children. Its dense forests, creepy characters, ominous callings for the dead, all that account for a world that is not familiar but people we all know and have seen. This has to be captured well and it is further enhanced by B. Ajanish Loknath's background score that assists not only the action sequences really well but creates a spooky atmosphere as the case experiences several turn of events. When you do see this in the theatre, the clever use of the background score will really pique your interest or wanting an official release of the BGM as well. The world, just like Rangita Ranga. Many people have said that this is in many ways a prequel to that film. What I always admire about Anub Bhandari and his world creation is the use of mystical elements in order to make the audience believe that there might be more things involved in the particular case that are beyond the comprehension of mortals. And this is usually denoted with superstitious background artists, a foreshadowing of the dead, horror elements integrated into his screenplay which make you blur the lines and ask, is this a crime thriller or a horror fantasy film? And that's what makes Vikrant Rona unique. 
from the offerings that you will find this week. It excels especially in the second half to really heighten the same features. I became a fan especially of the eerie tone that Vikrant Rona took, thankfully making it not just any investigative thriller. Kicha Sudeep I have to say that Kicha Sudeep is in very fine form in this film. Yes, the set pieces around him are stylized, yes, he whips people around and pulls them in some ways against the laws of gravity, but when you look beyond the surface and Anoop through his narrative really does make us understand his character from a deep level in its concluding moments, you do realize why the man has such a tough exterior. Swagged out in every way while he is uncovering the case, but the more you understand him, you realize it all is a means to hide the real sorrows from within. Kicha Sudeep really does well in highlighting both, accounting for the best part of the film, which is its climax. The film really does deliver in its final act, making my jaw drop especially in an action sequence that is choreographed and staged to perfection, of course having minimum cuts but giving you an illusion as if it has been captured in one long shot without any cuts. Through many parts of the film, Anoop shows you memories like a fever dream. They do not have a start or an end but just in flashes appear before the characters. These are small clues that are peppered throughout the film but without any context. When the motivations and themes are finally revealed, you actually connect the dots of the intention and all those scenes that were unassumingly placed in the film. Trust me, the final moments of the movie more than compensate for the slow-paced first half. Vikrant Rona has several issues in its storytelling, but why it stands out for me as a praiseworthy venture is because it deviates from just being a run-of-the-mill investigative thriller. It attempts to genuinely transport you to a different era half a century ago, to a world unknown and integrates several fantastical and horror elements on the journey that make it to be undoubtedly a unique experience at the theatres. And that was the video guys. Write down in the comments below what you thought about the movie. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram. The handle is right in front of you. Follow me at JammyPants4. Also, please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead. Thank you for watching.